Hello and welcome to wrestling and welcome to this pay-per-view post-mortem for WWE Stomping Grounds. A uh, pay-per-view that we kind of felt might not be very good, but it ended up being okay, I thought. I enjoyed it. Um, we've got to be honest, I haven't been watching WWE, to be fair, for the last few weeks. And I guess some of you guys would notice that because there hasn't been the weekly uploads like we usually do. Um, and again, of course, Adam's not here with me to do this video. So we're a little bit sort of behind on things here on Welcome to Wrestling, but I'm trying to keep up with it as best as I can, and hopefully things will turn around soon. Uh, make sure to subscribe, and you will see all of the, the output that we have going on. There is the GM mode going up still weekly, and uh, yeah, as I say, hopefully we'll get back round to doing Raw and Smackdown reviews. But let's cover Stomping Grounds. So, we started the night off in the kickoff with the Cruiserweight. And it was a triple threat match in the Cruiserweight division uh, for the Cruiserweight title. So Cruiserweight matches are usually pretty good and make it a triple threat. And it's going to be good sort of <laughs> to the action that you get just from two competitors. Add a third one and it's going to sort of elevate it, I think. But I don't know if it really did. It was a good match, but I think we've seen better Cruiserweight matches in the past. Um, there was some really good spots in it. Tozawa in particular, was sort of MVP, really, of the match. He did a like a running cannonball to the outside, uh, which looked awesome, into the um, like the guardrail. And he also broke up a, a gulok with a, that high senton drop, which was really well shot. The camera was just sort of focused on um, Tony Nice and uh, Drew Gulak in the middle of the ring, and then all of a sudden Tizawa just landed on them. It was great, and then they showed like a reverse shot on the replay, so uh, that was really uh, good Good work from the production team at WWE. Although, for the rest of the night, they did keep cutting to the crowd, which was really annoying. I wish he'd stopped doing that. Anyway, Gulak uh, managed to pick up the win. I, apparently, well, it looks like he's had a bit of a, a gimmick change. He's sort of in the black pants and everything. With it, He came down with a sort of more intense um, walk to the ring, and he, he managed to pick up the win over Tizawa, so the champion wasn't pinned, um, I guess they're maybe going to run with that and it'll be Gulak versus Nice uh, going forward. Good opening match though. So the opening match on the main card was the Raw Women's title match which to be fair was a little bit sloppy. Um, Becky had to sort of hold herself up in the turnbuckle because Lacey wasn't in place at one point. Um, she wasn't like where she should have been so they sort of had to redo that. Uh, Lacey seemed to mess up a few times when she was doing moves like she did that elbow drop from the outside of the ring to the inside and it looked like she didn't really catch it properly um, you could hear Becky calling moves throughout yeah it wasn't the greatest opening match uh, to a show um, we got to see Becky do a mandible claw though on Lacey with that hanky that she always pulls out that was cool and that was sort of the start of Becky's comeback because Lacey had sort of had the, the opening of the match um, eventually Becky locks in the disarm her and Lacey tapped really quickly really really quickly I was surprised at that thought she might have you know managed to, to hold on a little bit but no she tapped out almost immediately and uh, Becky retains that title but those two aren't done we'll uh, we'll get to them later on in the night following this was the tag match uh, which was non-title match it was the New Day Woods and Big E versus Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn this was a really good match. The only problem I had with it was the the opening was very... Uh, it had a lot of signature moves from uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. They, they got rid of Big E with a super kick. And then they hit uh, like all of their signatures. Blue Thunder Bomb. Um, you know, everything was being hit on Woods. Super kick, super kick, super kick. And he managed to keep just kicking out. And I thought it was a bit much... Um, but yeah, Woods just kicking out of everything. Um, KO eventually picked up the win later on in the match uh, with a stunner, which was sort of off like a um, Woods jumped into the stunner. And that was where I won the predictions, by the way. So we've, we've been doing predictions 
Uh, me and Adam, of course, we normally do videos, but we haven't been able to get together, so there's been no prediction videos for the last two pay-per-views. Uh, but we have been keeping up with it, and I am now the pay-per-view predictions champion, and my trophy is just over there. I'm going to go get it. Here it is. It's mine again. Second time I've uh, I've won it. Adam's had it twice, but Adam's had the had it the longest, so we'll keep doing this. Hopefully, we'll get to doing some predictions videos uh, again for you all. So yeah, really good tag match uh, second on the card. I enjoyed it. Um, as I say, just maybe could have not done so many signatures in the start, but it was a nice sort of hot opening to the match. And uh, as you know, New Day are great. Kevin Owens is great. Sami Zayn is great in the ring. So good match from all four guys, and you could tell they really wanted to to have a good match there. Ricochet versus Samoa Joe for the U.S. Championship. Um, I thought this was okay as well. Pretty good match. They they built it in a way that obviously it's the fast flippy man versus the strong ground striker, uh, which is sort of a good clash of styles. And um, of course, Joe was trying to to stop Ricochet and get him down to the ground and, and in locks and stuff like that. And Ricochet was trying to wriggle free. And uh, eventually he did, he did, and he hit the code breaker or whatever it's called. I don't know what Ricochet calls it. I have to look that up. He hit that move, and then he hit the 6.30, and Ricochet is the new US champion, which um, surprised me a little bit, but hopefully this means Samoa Joe's going to move up the card, because he should be at the top end. He would be a really good challenger for uh, for Kofi Kingston. Um, is it is the US on? I don't have, I've lost track of where the titles are now because of the whole wildcard rule. Q backstage celebrations with Ricochet from people on the roster. And, uh, yeah, it was a nice feel-good moment. Later on in the night, the club managed to uh, to sort of worm their way into Ricochet's photo shoot with his new title. And uh, AJ told him that he'll see him tomorrow night after congratulating him. But, yeah, they're kind of... Are they heel? Are they face? It's sort of in between, isn't it, with the club at the minute? Another tag match on the card, and this one was four titles. This was Daniel Bryan versus... Oh, Daniel Bryan and Rowan versus Heavy Machinery. Um, this is a good point to mention the crowd because they'd been great all night long in Tacoma, really adding to some of the matches. They were really hot for it. Um, a lot, of, you know, a lot of cheering, chanting, ovations for the uh, for the cruiserweight guys earlier on in the night. Uh, but because Daniel Bryan is a Washington boy, he was a local in this match, and they cheered the hell out of him despite him being the heel, and they were even booing Heavy Machinery. You know, who are probably one of the most babyface teams on the roster. They were quite funny though. They were chanting things like, please recycle and driver Prius. So that was making me laugh. It was a decent match again. Um, Otis and, and uh, Tucker, you know, bigger guys. But they move really well for being bigger guys. And uh, they have a nice bit of offense about them. Daniel Bryan, of course, is great. I think Rowan's... Flourishing in this role as well currently. Uh, but eventually Brian wins with an inside cradle on... Uh, was it Otis? I can't remember who it was. But they were rolling heavy machinery. They had stuff going. I think Daniel Bryan hit like a, a knee from the top turnbuckle as well at one point. So that looked pretty cool. So yeah, another good match. Following this we had Alexa versus Bailey with Nikki Cross at Alexa's side. Uh, this one was a little bit of a dip back down. Uh, in standard, it felt more like what you see on Raw. Uh, it was okay, but nothing amazing. But it had a really weird finish. Uh, Bailey had hit Nikki on the outside earlier on in the match, and um, as Alexa was picking up steam and she was about to hit a twisted bliss, Nikki runs in because I guess she was mad with Bailey, but it ended up distracting Alexa. So Bliss ended up losing. The match, um, and I just thought this just didn't work. It didn't look right. It looked really odd. I didn't know what they were going for. Um, so yeah, a bit of a bit of a strange finish to that one. And then Nikki and Alexa were sat together in the ring, and I thought Alexa was going to turn on Nikki, but no, it didn't happen. Weird, weird booking that one. Drew versus Roman, um, which is, again is another rematch. Uh, it was pretty much the rematch card this one, wasn't it tonight? Uh, Shane got involved a lot in this of course him and Drew are kind of buddies at the minute and Shane beat Roman at Super Showdown so I thought there's no way Roman's going to lose on two pay-per-views in a row uh, but he kept getting distracted by Shane 
who you know was doing his best to uh, to put him off. And there was a bit where Roman was about to hit a Superman punch on Drew, and Shane got up on the the ring edge. So uh, so he hit him with the Superman punch. Then he went to the outside and hit him again with another Superman punch. Uh, this led to Drew taking over the match. He hit uh, like an Alabama slam onto the table. Eventually, Roman turned it back around, uh, and he almost had it won. But Shane pulled the ref off of the, you know, off of the ring, out of the ring, and uh, the ref tweaked his knee in the process. He seemed to like really yank him uh, out of the ring, and uh, the ref was limping visibly. You could see that he was hurt. Uh, Shane hit a coast to coast, and uh, it looked as if Roman was gonna lose, but he hit the big babyface comeback and managed to win via a spear. So, uh, a nice pop as well for Roman. There were some Roman Sucks chants earlier on in the night. Earlier than I thought, we were going to start hearing them again, but they seem to be back. But, big pop for the win. And, uh, again, this one was okay. I quite enjoyed it. I thought with Shane being in there, it was going to be a bit rubbish. But, no, it was okay, and I quite enjoyed it. Cage match followed uh, between Ziggler and Kofi Kingston for the WWE Championship. And I don't really like the... The, uh, the door on the steel cage. I don't think it adds much to steel cage matches. It used to be better when that wasn't in there. But they did use it quite a bit in this match. And to be fair, it was decent um, what they did, the spots that they did with it. So we had the usual cage match shenanigans, duking it out on top of the cage, sort of teetering as if they're going to fall one way or the other. Uh, people crawling towards the door, trying to escape. Uh, Kofi hit this move, I can't remember exactly what it was, but he, he jumped down from the cage and landed on the ropes, because there's hardly any room between the ropes and the cage in a steel cage, uh, which Corey had alluded to as well earlier on in the match, saying how it differs from an elimination cage, which I thought was a nice touch of commentary, and then Kofi, he did like bounced off of the ropes, did some sort of move, I can't remember what it was exactly, uh, but that was cool. Then later on, Dolph hit a super kick, which nearly sent Kofi flying out the door, uh, he was sort of half teetering over and Dolph had to scramble to grab his leg and keep him in. So that was a really effective way of using the door. Um, the finish came as Dolph was crawling out of the ring. He was nearly there. He, all he had to do was sort of just shove himself out when Kofi stood back up after being knocked out. Jumped clean over the top, over the ropes, over Dolph and landed outside. So a unique finish and actually a decent way to, to utilise the door in steel cage. As I say, I don't normally like it, but I thought this was uh, was a good way of doing that. Right, main event time, and boy was this a weird main event. It was basically, let's just shove the fact that Seth and Becky are dating uh, in your faces. So, of course, after weeks of build-up, Corbin had said he was going to pick a referee, special guest. Um, from what I gather on the weekly show, Smackdown and Raw, he was getting male superstars to to come out and say that they were going to be the special ref but Seth was attacking them and taking them out so for fear of this happening on the night he picked Lacey Evans of course Lacey Evans is currently in a feud with Seth's girlfriend Becky Lynch so Lacey of course did everything in her power to to get Corbin to win she was slow counting you know she was um, just av avoiding things happening like not seeing things happening um she was pretending that like her arm had been through out. And again, Corey did another good line saying, oh, Becky Lynch put the put her in the disarmor early on in the night. So it's Becky Lynch's fault that she's not counting. She changed the rules of the match. She made it um, made it a no count out because Corbin was going to lose via count out. Even when she was slow counting, uh, she changed it to a no DQ. So uh, this eventually led to Corbin sort of taking charge. Um, but... Lacey then um, slow counted when Seth was about to win and he got all up in her face. She slapped him a couple of times. She got physical with him. Then Corbin went for a roll up. Then she hits him with a low blow and this brought Becky Lynch out to the ring because it's no DQ now so Becky can come down. She wipes Lacey out. She hits her with a exploder on the outside of the ring into the to the ramp, uh, not the ramp, sorry, the uh, barricade. So Lacey's out. Standard refs have to come down and finish the match off. Uh, Seth hits a curb stomp and wins and it was just basically Becky Lynch and Seth Rollins is like kind of sort of coming out party as a couple uh, they were there in the middle of the ring hugging raising each other's arms 
And like, uh, it was a feel good moment to be fair. But yeah, weird main event. It didn't really feel like a main event. Um, but overall, good pay per view, I thought. It was better than I expected. I thought it wasn't going to be very good. Maybe it's sort of helped that I've taken a step back from WWE recently. Um, I don't know. Now, just on the topic of that, um, I'm going to be finishing up work in the middle of July. So hopefully I'm going to be able to do more and more stuff on the channel. So make sure to subscribe and uh, keep up to date with what we're doing. But yeah, as I say, decent pay-per-view stomping ground. And I think I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I, I enjoyed it. I thought it was a good show. And uh, well worth three and a bit hours of my time. Thank you for watching and we will see you in our next video which will be our GM mode on Friday.